and I've sort of touched upon it slightly in some of them in some of my other videos. Fucking start again, you bellend. I've mentioned in the past about transcoding and I've had um, uh, various questions uh, sort of raised with me about transcoding and what transcoders are and what type of transcoders are available and so I thought I'd actually dedicate a whole video say a whole video, it makes it sound like it's going to last for like three hours, it's not um, I thought I'd dedicate a video uh, uh, just to specifically uh, to discuss transcoding and transcoders. So what is a transcoder? Well I suppose in in its most simplistic form it it is about um, it's about taking something and effectively converting it to something else. Now in the in the realms of of, of video transcoders, and I suppose specifically as regards to um, uh, retro transcoding for, sorry, not retro, trans, there's no such thing as retro transcoding. As regards to transcoding for retro consoles, it is, I suppose really predominantly, certainly as regards to the way that I've used it, is about actually taking something like a progressive um, a video signal and converting it to an RGB HV uh, signal which in essence is a is a VGA type output, super VGA type output. Now you'll probably ask what's the point of doing it? Why would you need to transcode? Specifically for me it's about the ability for me to connect up something that doesn't have a VGA output to a, a target device that has to have VGA input into it. So specifically for what I do, it is used uh, with consoles like the PlayStation 2 in progressive mode, so that's 480p mode, and also things like the Xbox, Wii, for connection up to a CRT type uh, PC monitor. Uh, I'm a strong believer that that is the best way to display, uh, in my opinion, uh, the best way to display a 480 progressive signal. Um, you know, it's using CRT technology. I love CRT technology, as you are undoubtedly aware from my channel. And and for me to get the best picture, in my opinion, to get the best picture out the 480 progressive output from a PlayStation 2, which is obviously only for certain games, but I actually, um, uh, recently I was using it for for playing Gradius 5, which you can actually convert to progressive output, 480 progressive output. And now of course, uh, the original Xbox, nearly all the games, in fact, I think all the games, were 480 progressive as a bare minimum. So, if you've got a VGA type um, a target device, uh, then obviously you can't connect a progressive uh, component output to that. And for the PlayStation 2 and the Xbox, the original Xbox, um, uh, you can only really use a, a component output for progressive. I know that there are VGA uh, cables that are available for the PlayStation 2 but they are sort of pretty much like rocking horse shit and I think there was one that did come out by another third party for the Xbox but I could be wrong but but by and large you can't get hold of uh, those types of cables so you're stuck in a bit of an issue there a quandary as regards to how you connect through to a tag device it's VGA ergo transcoders so it it's it's for me, it's about a method to be able to transcode or encode a, 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 a progressive a component a, a video signal over to a VGA a video signal so I can feed it into my, into my VGA CRT monitor. Now, there's several devices out there that will enable you to do transcoding in, in various different ways. and. I always relate to a transcoder being something that, that 
effectively when something's transcoded in my view it's about doing it without any form of video processing of course there's there's a bit of an issue that when you start to introduce video processing you will introduce lag a pure transcoder or something that, that transcodes purely um, won't add any additional lag so that is that's an absolute added bonus for, um, of a transcoder and nearly well, I say not nearly all, but but a lot of video processors, you know, a lot of the video processors that I've reviewed on my channel will actually effectively transcode as well. Uh, they will transcode, but obviously they're big units, they cost a lot of cash. So if you just uh, want to literally just transcode a video signal, then obviously you want to just buy a transcoder. And transcoders, uh, by, very, by the very nature of what they do and what they are, uh, they can be very, very small units. Now this is a Mayflash transcoder. Look how small it is. I mean that, that is if I just get my my iPhone, my iPhone, my iPhone 5S. It's sort of same sort of height as that, but it's very thin as well. Uh, as regards to the width, sorry, not not that way. Well, it's still not actually that big that way, is it really? But it's it's a very small device. So so people that have got um, I suppose tri sync arcade cabinets and want to get everything within the cabinet and not have external video processors that are taking them a lot of space. Uh, something like this is is absolutely ideal. And this is a transcoder and this is a pure transcoder. It doesn't do any form of video processing. So effectively what I do for me is I'll connect my component uh, progressive um, uh, signals into there and, and then I uh, connect to the VGA output uh, which is that one there now you can actually have have a VGA input on it so you can switch between two inputs on this particular transcoder but that's of no use to me um, I'll just use the straight uh, component through to VGA now unfortunately the only problem with this specific transcoder and I'm not actually sure because I haven't got a lot of transcoders as regards to pure transcoder this is the only the only transcoder that I've got just as a transcoder it is only compatible with certain video signals and this specific one is compatible with 480p input 720p input 1080p input and 1080i input it is not compatible with 480i so if you were to use this on a on a PlayStation 2 for instance now PlayStation 2s will only flip to 480p uh, dependent on a game so so all the menu system within within the PlayStation 2 is 480i so you'll get no signal unfortunately uh, if you use a transcoder that isn't compatible with, um, uh, with appropriate interlace picture it'll just give you a blank screen which is pretty pretty worthless in effect um, so it's a bit of a limitation of a transcoder that if you've got a if you've got a video signal that is flipping between, uh, for instance, in this case, 480i to 480p, um, then you may have a few issues at least as regards to seeing the 480i content. So, so you need to take that into account. Now, if I use a video processor for transcoding as well, something like the XRGB3. That'll handle a 480i image and it will also obviously transcode 480p from component progressive to VGA. But it's a bigger unit, it's a bigger unit, it costs a shed load more money. This I bought second hand and it cost, I think it cost me about £30, £25-30. Um, I'm pretty sure they still sell these so if you look at the Mayflash website they should still be on there and I don't think they're particularly dear, you know, £55-ish I think they are so they're not particularly dear for what they are but they have got limitations now like I said I don't know enough about standalone transcoders because uh, I haven't got any apart from this one to know whether or not to know whether or not there's actually other ones out there that can handle 480i signals for something like the Xbox it's not an issue uh, because the Xbox only outputs 480p as far as I know uh, as a bare minimum so you should be absolutely fine with that. But with PlayStation 2, it, it, it's, it won't be specifically that straightforward all of the time. But that's just one of the things that, that you just have to take on the chin, really, as regards to something like this, you know. Um, 
so yeah so it, it's and there's no point in me showing you what it looks like on the screen because it, it it's it's just a progressive uh, signal if you cut all the jargon out if you cut all the jargon out this is a way of taking a component phono or component sorry and this is a way of taking a progressive component a video signal and it converts it effectively to a VGA output so that in its most simplest form is what something like this is doing so that is basically a transcoder um, I don't have a fat lot of use for transcoders if I'm being honest and, and normally I use something like the XRGB3 for all my transcoding needs because it'll it'll video process and it'll transcode but like I said the good thing about something like this is its size um, and the cost of it and also because it is a pure transcoder there is no additional processing lag it does not process the video signal in in any way shape or form it just effectively converts it to a VGA output hope you enjoyed the video guys and I'll speak to you again soon